Ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Ground control to Major Tom. Commencing countdown engines on. Check ignition. May God's love be with you. This is ground control to Major Tom. You've really made the grade. Now the papers want to know who shirts your way. Coffee stain. It's time to leave the capsule if you dare. This is Major Tom to ground control. I'm stepping through the door. Now I'm floating in the most peculiar way And the stars look very different today For here am I sitting in a tin can Far above the world Planet Earth is blue Figure I'd start us off spicy, baby. It's been a month and a half. Got to come bike with a banger, dude. DJ Witwicky here to provide you episode 75 of Tremendous Opinions Podcast. I know I'm wicked late, but I'm lucky I'm here at all. Here's a horror story to start off the episode. I'm going to mow the yard the other day. And the mower's parked underneath a deck. And like there's like columns on either side, like brick columns. And I sit down on the mower and lean back. And I crack my head on the like wooden beam on the deck. And I'm like, ah. And I go like this. And there's a snake right here. A freaking huge snake. It had to be probably four feet long. Freaking huge. And it's just like this right here. And I just went cold. And, I mean, I'm trying not to exaggerate. Maybe right here. It could go... And just eat my face. It's just looking at me and I see its black tongue. It just did the thing. And I just go cold, dude. And I like... uh, Like slide out of it like that. Like uh, how low can you go? And just get away from them. But I've been on edge ever since, dude. Like a little upswing in cigarettes and a little paranoia at nighttime when I can't see my surroundings real good. I'm not in my natural habitude of the freaking Xbox den over there. Little, I'm going to take the term domination station. I have been petrified ever since I tried to mow the yard the other day. So there's a little story for you. It did one thing, though. You know, there's always a silver lining. I did get inspired from, like, being that close to the snake. Uh, Me and the dog watched two Indiana Jones movies the other day, which is freaking sick, dude. Watched the one with the evil heart pull-out guy and, uh, what, the one where they fight the Nazis. Real nice. Real nice. The graphics are just pathetic, but tremendous motion picture nonetheless, both of them. And the one that we didn't watch is probably my favorite. The Last Crusade was Sean Connery, Junior, Junior. I can't do impressions. My dog enjoyed Indiana Jones. He usually doesn't, you know, pay attention for what's... But when Short Round had the car, like driving through Chinatown, he was locked in. My dog was digging Indy. And we've been on a heater lately. We didn't stop with Indiana Jones. 
Me and the dog watched Blade 2 and 3 the other day. Wesley Snipes, hands down, the best vampire of all time. The best freaking vampire of all time, dude. I haven't seen, you know, whatever. Uh, what was the one? Like True Blood or something that was like popular? I may have messed up the name. I never saw a stitch of that. But I was rather admirable of the Twilight series. And even so, uh, Wesley Snipes would just beat that crap out of that kid. Uh, whatever his name is that looks like me when I had COVID. Whatever that kid's name is that they tried to make Batman for some reason. Just pedestrians. Just a, a whatever. A drug dealer in Harlem could just beat the crap out of that guy in a Batman suit. I don't buy it. Where was I? Wesley Snipes. Oh, especially Wesley Snipes, dude. Wesley Snipes would just look at him and he would crumble. And he would have this little utility belt and he'd be fumbling around trying to get the mace or the pepper spray. And dude, Wesley Snipes would just deck him with a nice combo, like one of those Nate Diaz combos where he's just toying with him just for funsies, dude. He's just beating the crap out of Batman in Harlem. But in all seriousness, Wesley Snipes is the greatest vampire of all time. He would, I uh, can't think of the guy's name. Pattinson, Robert Pattinson. He would just lay him in the shade. And it sucks because Robert Pattinson is like my build. And there's not a, I mean, I'm saying it about myself too. I don't stand a chance against Wesley Snipes, dude. He'd double me over and lay me in the shade. Lay me in the shade over there next to LeBron. LeBron's in the shade. <laughs> The Joker swept LeBron into the shade and perhaps into retirement, which was a freaking huge surprise to me the other day. But you know what I think? I think he might actually retire this time. He's going to retire and then come back like Magic Johnson. You heard it here first, peoples. I've made some wicked awful predictions before, like the Derek Carr for MVP. Dude, he couldn't even start on like a peewee flag football team. I'm saying now that LeBron is going to retire to get out of his contract because his son just committed to USC. He'll watch his son play ball, go to all the games, whatever. And then once LeBron's son is drafted, goes to whoever, you know, the Rockets or some other subpar organization, LeBron then signs with that team in free agency and joins his son. Just a foolproof system to be, I mean, they could rig it. They could, you know, trade D'Angelo Russell for the first overall pick or however you'd want to slice it. But that's the only foolproof way that LeBron can be on the same team as his kid. If that's really what his heart desires, I don't know. I would imagine so, like King Griffey Jr. type of deal. Want to play with him. So, retire, keep working out in the off season, or the, you know, the full season next year, just get some runs in with some Humpty Dumps, and keep your body in shape, which shouldn't be hard for LeBron, been doing it 20 years, then sign with the Utah Jazz or whatever worst record team in the league is next year. It's a theory, conspiracy theory. I don't have that much to talk about this episode. I don't want to give you an ear beating. I figured I'd show you some of the cool stuff I picked up in the last month. Uh, I'll start off with the Kith slides. I got these in today. These are freaking wicked, dude. I got the the black ones and these ones. Nice. Uh, a book. Yes, I can read. I don't. So I was thinking about it. The last full book that I read was probably in 8th grade, and it was called My Side of the Mountain, and I actually read the sequel on the far side of the mountain, which, whatever, I like adventure books, or that book. I used to read, like, Lemony Snickets and whatever, Harry Potter or whatever, you know, but since I could drive a car, I haven't read a full book. I got the Gucci Mane autobiography as a Christmas present and didn't read the full book. 
This is going to be the first book I read fully since 8th grade. This is Tremendous, The Life of a Comedy Savage by Joey Coco Diaz. And Joey's the reason I started doing this podcast. Uh, I'm going to give you a little excerpt out of his book. It just came out last week and it's on the Barnes & Noble's bestsellers list. Here is the start of Chapter 2, entitled The Stepfather. Not long after I met my stepfather, Juan, I watched him shoot a guy in the leg. We hopped in the car afterwards, went down to the Hudson River, and tossed the gun in the water together like a family. We never spoke a word about it after that. That's how Chapter 2 starts. Awesome, dude. I'm on Chapter like 7 or 8. I can't even remember. And I promise I'm going to finish this and I'll give you another excerpt out of it whenever I find a good one. That's PC. This is like definitely not for everybody. Um, okay, I went to the sports card show and I have a little cut to go to f about that. And last but definitely not least, this is... A J. Paul vinyl record. It's all I've been thinking about for about a month and change. And I finally have it here in the studio. And there's only 3,000 copies. They sold out. And now on eBay, they're going for like 140 So I have one. And I did my first reaction piece. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for clicking on this podcast. As always... We are brought to you by CoffeeStainClothing.com. We have a few DJ Witwicky shirts still available. And I'm about to blast out a baseball shirt for next week. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you guys for being here. Enjoy the rest of the episode. I'll see you next time. I'm a 30-year-old man who went to the sports card show. So here's my pickups. Vince Carter. Nice. Little T-Mac, baby. Larry Booch. Little Dirk. Apparently, as you can see, that's Dirk Nowitzki. Gilbert Arenas, my boy. Little Rookie Cooch. Jamal. Yow. A master of human movement. Wilt Chamber Neasy. Little pistol pooch. Ooh. Mike is smart. I'm really from Oakland, though. Ooh. Nostalgia. All right. Magic. Oh, you hear that, Hank? And I got these on eBay. Little Iverson. Big Shot Chauncey action. Ooh. The Kellas. Okay. Dad gummit. Let's do this, baby. Give me something nice. Gilbert. Islam. Whitaker. Ooh. Peter, Dad Gummit, <gasps> a master of human movement. That was a terrible, a master. That was a bad one again. McGregor, the master of human movement. That was still a bad one. All right. Two more chances, baby. Extending this segment. 
giving you another ear beating on the internet dad gummit okay The saga continues. What do we have here? Has finally come. I'm freaking nervous about this dude. This just showed up at the doorstep about 10 minutes ago. This is the long-awaited J. Paul vinyl. I ordered this like a month ago. It comes with a price tag. This thing here, if you want this, it'll cost you about $140. Okay, this is for sure the most expensive vinyl that I have. And I'm about to open it. And it hurts my soul to open this, you know? But I'm doing it for you, the people of the internet. Ah. Dude. <laughs> oh. J. Paul, the leaked album for the first time ever on vinyl. And I'm about to do a reaction piece. Oh, God. I'm freaking nervous. I'm a 30-year-old man getting freaking excited about the J. Paul vinyl. Yeah, baby! Here we go. Before we get started, this is probably my favorite album of all time. I've been waiting for it to drop for like, I don't know, 10 years. And actually, I, I can't lie. I've been doing vinyl for like three years. So I've wanted this for three years. They finally dropped it. I waited a month for the mail to run, and today it's here. And I'm going to give you the highlights, just like I did on the last Vinyl Soul Searching. This is what I've been pumped up for for like a month now. Oh. <sighs> J. Paul Vinyl. Let's go. J. Paul, what are the veggies? In the game, in the game, what are the veggies? Woo! Uh, this 
Flipping it over, baby. Thank <laughs> you. 